boats any refuse into the White River? Oh, wait. I haven't the faintest idea. Be interesting to find out. Running a newspaper, I can't put more than four words together and make sense. You always manage to make yourself understood. Oh, you mean writing editorials? Well, that I can do. But making speeches always did scare the daylights out of me. So don't expect me to make a speech. <laughs> I won't. Just one thing. There's always a lot of joking about all I know is what I read in the papers. Wait, that's no joke. People really believe what they read. I know. This country, the people expect to read the truth. See that they get it, son. How well, I prefer. Morning, Iris. Good morning, Mr. Haskins. Spring has all a supply call twice. They wanted someone to pick up the cuts for Thursday, and I told him you would do it, Mr. Haskins. Well, a reporter, not an errand boy. What's the matter with Irwin? He went down to see us to see about a double page for the monthly sale, Mr. Haskins. Okay, I'll do it. How long do you have to work around here before you stop calling me Mr. Haskins? I always treat men with respect. Then they treat me with respect, Mr. Haskins. That... This is Andy Butterworth. Hello, Andy. How do you do? Yeah. Oh, you're the new editor. That's right. How are the kids? Fine, fine. I got another one since I saw you last. I have five now. Well, those gray hairs are deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you mind? No, no. Go ahead. Well, off the record, we won't quote you. How much refuse and acid does the plant dump in the river? Why, none. Factory's right on the river. You must dump some. No. The solvents are burned in the incinerator, and the acids are diluted and go on down to the sewage treatment plant. What goes in the river? Nothing. I know, because it's my job to see that the disposal rules are carried out. Isn't there anything thrown in the river? Not a thing. Is that what you wanted to know? Yes, that's what I wanted to know. Thanks very much, Andy. I made a mistake. No harm done. You must have a crusade. Our readers ought to be informed about the things business interests get away with. You mean John McFarland? How do you suppose his son got elected? Why, well, I had an idea the voters had something to do with it. They'll soon discover their mistake, because I'm going to tell them with our little one-horse paper. Uncle Cliff wouldn't like to hear you call it that. The Herald hasn't grown up with a town. A crusade will help circulation. Don't you think we ought to be a bigger newspaper? Sure, I'm all for that. Then maybe I'd get a raise. rest of you get to do Discussing this attack you're making on business profits. Very interesting to hear their opinions. And? They asked me a couple of questions about why you were doing it, but I couldn't answer them. I really don't know.
ask you this morning? You're so eager to criticize newspapers. Why do you work for one? Who's criticizing newspapers? They stand or fall on their own merits. It's you. I'm just going out to facts and printing them. Have to tell you out for some facts about the McFarland factory? I didn't find out anything. You found out the factory was not polluting the river. That was commendable. You didn't print that. May I come in? Why, yes. Thank you. I thought I'd come down and have a little talk about something we're both interested in. What's that? The subject of your editorials. How's your tobacco holding up? Fine, sir. Here, you're welcome to it. Thank you. You're Slim Haskins, aren't you? That's right. We have a draft from the our shop. Talks a great deal about you. Deckerman. Yeah, we were in the same CB outfit. I suppose you've come to talk about your son, the senator. No, I didn't. I'm not too concerned about him. He'll take care of himself. But I've been following your editorials very closely. Now, I know it's the duty of a newspaper to print the news. Of course, companies like Metro, Tri-State, and Farland Motors, they are news. Of course they are, especially their profit. That's right. And I'm interested in profits, both for myself and the customer. My main reason for coming here was to see if I could perhaps interest you in printing something about a pet theory I have. I call it profits to the customer. What do you mean? Well, as I say, it's my own private little pet theory. It's very simple, not very complicated. You see, I'm not an economist. I'm just a businessman. I have to make a profit to stay in business. Well, we all know that. I make a profit on every electric motor I sell. But the customer must make a larger profit. Because if he doesn't, he won't buy my motors and I'm out of business. The customer must make a profit. That's right. Would you like to try my mixture? Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, the customer must make a profit. For example, you have some typesetting machines out there. The manufacturer who sold them made a profit on them. But your paper would never have bought them in the first place if they couldn't deliver something beyond their original cost. They must continue to work for your paper to be worth more to you than you paid for them. As a customer, that's your profit. My profit? Yes, you sell your newspaper to a man for five cents. He gets news, advertisements, and all kinds of information for his home and business. He gets service beyond the value of his five cents. As a customer, that's his profit. The same story with everything else. The light bulb, the refrigerator, the telephone. For this, we pay a few dollars a month. Our profits are enormous in steps alone. In case of an emergency, its value can't be estimated. That's a different slant from what we've been printing. As you say, that's just a theory. But you can't deny that you are a big business. In your editorials, you've been insisting that because a thing is big, it's bad. It takes bigness to do big things. Our industry has turned out equipment for our armed forces in a remarkably short space of time. It was a big job, and it was well done. It helped us to win the war and preserve our country. That's what American industry, with its bigness, was able to accomplish. Was that bad, Blake? The last 50 years, we've come a long way. It used to take a week to get a letter across the United States. Now we do it in one day. The difference in time alone could affect the happiness of a family. It might even mean a matter of life and death. In my time, I've seen advances in industry that have added 20 years to the average span of life. My father died in the old country at the age of 40, an old man. His work was absolute drudgery, slavery, on his own farm, from 5 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night. But because I live in America, I feel like a young man, and I'll be 65 in April. McFarland, your tobacco makes mighty fine smoothies. Why are you telling me all this? 
Well, I thought perhaps you might be interested in both sides of this profit question. Print something else for a change. Mr. McFarland, I don't tell you how to run your plant, so please don't tell me how to run my paper. I'll print my own conception of business profits. Good day, sir. Well, I just thought I'd come in and talk, which I have. Remember, Blake, when this country was first discovered, there was nothing here. Now look around you. Everything you see is profits. Our transportation, communication, household appliances, medical equipment. Notice them sometime, Blake. They're the real profits. <laughs> 